So here's the other issue on this F-150 with a 543 valve in it. It's been recording a cylinder misfire on number 5, misfire detected on startup. Um, 316, that might be cylinder 6, but regardless. Bank 2 catalyst efficiency problem. Uh, bank 2 has got cylinder 5 on it. Then of course the fuel level center, the intake manifold runner control. Uh, that's a secondary issue. That was there before, but I want to look at misfire counters on this thing. I've got the key on. Engine not running. So we're going to go in here and, and look at... Uh, uh, let's see if it's under functional tests. A cylinder contribution test. It wasn't missing when I drove it in the shop. I'm going to look in generic functions mode 6 and see if it has a, a history of misfires over the last 10 drive cycles so I get confirmation that it is cylinder 5 that's con got the problem. It's got 190 plus thousand kilometers on it so here's cylinder misfire cylinder 1 <coughs> misfire counters over the last 10 drive cycles uh, That's misfire monitor. Did I pick the wrong one here? No, oh, I picked misfire monitor generator, so I should have picked this one. So this is over the last 10 drive cycles. Value 0. That's cylinder 1, cylinder 2. And of course, if you clear the codes, this is going to be wiped out. So 0 misfires on cylinder 2, cylinder 3. Zero misfires counted. This is only four. So this is all on bank one. And no misfires been reported on bank two, on bank one. So cylinder five is a cylinder that had the fault code logged against it, and yet it shows zero. Now, unfortunately, it has a, it looks like the battery was just recently replaced, so this could have been erased. by resetting the codes or disconnecting the battery. That was six, that's seven. Normally this would be a pretty good resource, but it's not panning out very well at all here. No, no help whatsoever. So we're gonna go back into functional tests and the cylinder contribution test and start it up and run. This is Snap-on's version of the uh, cylinder contribution test. The negative numbers show that the cylinder is not contributing as much. I think we're going to fire up IDS and look at it. While IDS is booting up here, I just thought of something else. It's possible that the OBD2 misfire monitors may have been disabled by the fuel level sender code because fuel level in the tank can affect misfires. Obviously if it's low enough to be sucking air it could cause a misfire. So most misfire detection is, is disabled if it's below 5% fuel level. And of course this has a fuel level sender problem as near as I can tell. So there's a stretch here but it's possible that the sending unit is affecting the ability to count the misfires on the generic side. So we'll uh, get this IDS booted up here. So we're connected wirelessly to the Ford VCM2 and it's attempting to communicate with the PCM to ID the vehicle and it doesn't usually take this long. Okay, 
finally ID'd it. Come on, you can do it. Does a network scan initially to see what controllers, I guess, are on the network. Gathering vehicle data, it says. Oh, hey. That's the last eight of the bin. This is Ford IDS version of the cylinder contribution test. We'll also try a relative compression test just to see how that fares. Come on, you can do it. So battery died on my camera so I had to swap that out. Here's the uh, IDS version of the power balance. This one's actually showing number one and seven. Let's uh, clear that. You can see number one and seven are actually potentially a problem. It doesn't feel bad in the cab of the vehicle but definitely one and seven are, are, are lacking. Cylinder five which has the code doesn't show a problem. Hmm. Well, let's try a relative compression test. So IDS version of the relative compression test will crank the engine or ask you to crank the engine for 10 seconds and hold the throttle wide open and it'll give us a graph. So I'm going to go get in the cab of the vehicle here. I probably have to hit OK on this screen here. gets ready here we'll wait for this test to load so here is the criteria it'll automatically continue when the key is on and the engine is off and the gas pedal is held to the floor so I'm getting in the cap tell by the cadence of the engine that there's no serious mechanical issue. All cylinders seem to be uh, fluctuating at the same RPM as far as a relative compression test. So that test kind of suggests that the engine is mechanically okay. This thing could probably use a tune-up like plugs which are not fun to change on these 543 valves. So I'm going to talk to the customer and see where he wants to go from there. So I'm looking at this uh, power balance histograph here and it's showing number one and seven are a bit weak. Let's compare that to the snap-on software. So here's the snap-on software running on this Ford truck. And of course negative numbers indicate that the cylinder is not contributing as much. Negative 22 on cylinder one and negative eight to 10 on cylinder seven. These ones here are all positive. So it's given us relatively the same kind of uh, information, just not as graphical in nature. And I don't think you can graph these. 
Well, you can graph these, but it, it's not the same thing as the comparison graph. This is going to be eight graphs. So not not nearly as visual as the snap or as the IDS original equipment software is. But still you can still see cylinder one negative eighteen to negative twenty and cylinder seven negative ten eleven. Cylinder six is pretty strong. So again we're gonna to talk to the customer and see when and if the plugs have ever been changed in this thing and potentially do a tune up on it. So I'm back working on this F-150, this 2007 King Ranch with the 5.4 and yesterday was looking at it for a potential misfire and this is IDS uh, power balance graph showing weak on cylinder 1 and cylinder 7 yet the relative compression test doesn't show uh, any deviation in compression and it sounds fine when it's cranking. So given the fact that changing the spark plugs in these things are a pain in the royal butt I'm going to leave that till last. I'm going to try and do uh, an injector balance test. Considering this one's pretty easy to do, it's all built into the system. As it says, it uses a fuel rail pressure sensor on the electronic fuel returnless system, and it won't run if there's any diagnostic codes associated with the fuel rail pressure. So we're going to start the test, and it's a totally out automated test where it it energizes the fuel rail low fuel pump output pressure, really. Excessive pressure drop has been detected. Do not attempt to crank or start the engine until the following has been verified. Check for faulty fuel system components. Check for leaking stuck open fuel injectors. Uh, normally it would hold pressure. I'm going to put a pressure gauge on this thing and see if it actually is leaking down. So there is no fuel pressure test port on this truck. Ford didn't bother with it because they figured they have a fuel rail pressure sensor here and they can read it electronically, but what if it's wrong? So in order to test it, we have to put this uh, T-fitting in on this not-so-quick disconnect. So I've already sprayed penetrating fluid into that garter spring and blew it out with compressed air. And we're going to try and release that and put this T-fitting in so I can put a manual pressure gauge on this thing. So this is one style of release tool that you need to release that garter spring in there to get that fuel line off. I managed to get it off. We're going to put some silicone grease on the seals and slide the T in. So I got the fuel pressure gauge teed in and it's interesting when I went to bring this in a few minutes ago I noticed it seemed to crank a little longer than normal which would stand to reason if it had to build up fuel pressure. I wonder if we've got leaky injectors on those two cylinders and that's what's causing the miss and and the result in loss of fuel pressure. Let's let's see how the fuel pressure reacts. Let's just get this set up. I'll start it and then we'll see what we're running at and we shut it off. About 34, 34 and a half psi, 34 psi. should hold fuel pressure when you shut it off and as you can see it doesn't well because this is a returnless system there's only two possible causes for it to lose fuel pressure there's no external leaks that I saw underneath the vehicle and no complaint of fuel smell so it's either a faulty check valve in the fuel pump or it's a leaky fuel injector or two given the misfire situation and the codes that were in this history of misfire on startup, I'm leaning towards it being an injector. Now, in order to qualify that, I need to deadhead the fuel pump or put a shutoff valve in the circuit so that I can turn off the fuel rail and see if the fuel pump itself holds pressure. 
I don't think I have that kind of equipment because and there's not a lot of room for it in there. You can barely get that T in there. Let me see what I can figure out here. So again, looking at this power balance, cylinder one and cylinder seven are the weak ones. They could be overfueling. Uh, looking at the cylinder firing order, one is on the passenger side front and seven is the third cylinder down on the driver's side. Uh, it's not going to be easy to shut off the fuel system, but it might be easier to pull the fuel rail off with the four injectors attached and see if this injector is leaking or if this injector is leaking or e any of them are leaking. I think that's going to be easier looking at the top of the engine here. The injector rail comes out fairly easily. So I think we're going to explore it that way. So I'm using IDS to command the fuel pump on. I have the fuel rail pulled out of the intake manifold enough so I can see the tips of the injectors. I'm running the fuel pump and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with this camera but that third injector is dripping every I don't know, 30 to 60 seconds it'll drip. Again, I'm not sure if the camera's getting it. Zoom in on this thing. But definitely it's got a leaky injector on. That's one, two, that's number three. Number five, uh, number one injector is seeping ever so slightly. Nope. The fuel injector just blew out of the fuel rail. Okay, that was fun. So I noticed this has been worked on before. One bolt that holds the fuel rail down at the very back there is broken off in the manifold. This bolt over here on this corner was original, but the other two bolts are obviously have been replaced. So somebody's changed one or more injectors in this in the past. Uh, there is a clip that holds the injector in the fuel rail. I'm not sure which one blew out. Oh, this third one blew out. So you can see that blue o-ring there and just below it is the metal clip that holds the injector in the fuel rail and mind you once the fuel rail is bolted down that clip is kind of redundant but nevertheless that clip let go and that injector blew out I don't know what to do here the injectors that I spotted seeping were not the ones that are on the cylinders with low power but nevertheless they shouldn't be leaking So on the right is the injector that blew out of the fuel rail and I can see why the retaining clip was not installed correctly. It's not in the latch so it wasn't on the rail. It also looks like it's a different injector compared to the one that came out of cylinder number five which is the front cylinder here. Um, it shows it, when you're looking up the parts it shows two different versions of the injectors depending on when the truck was built before or after a certain date. So I'm not sure this bothers me that this injector has been changed and so has the coil I can see on cylinder number five, six, seven, cylinder seven. I'm not sure about cylinder one. I'll have a look at that injector over there. So looking at the injector that's in that spot there, that's also been replaced. I can tell by looking at it that it's been replaced. It has a yellow band on the top compared to this one which has a yellow band on the top as well. So somebody's been chasing this problem before and uh, this is not something that's happened recently. So I'm not sure. I know it has a couple of leaking injectors on the right bank but I think I'd recommend putting a complete set of injectors in here. Who knows if these are even the right injectors now. There's supposed to be a part number on the injector. I'm assuming that this one here is an OEM one but I'll see if I can find a part number. So looking at these two injectors, even the spray tips are different. And who's to guarantee they're going to deliver the same quantity of fuel, given the fact that they have different numbers, different brands. I don't know which one's original. 
the one on the left doesn't have any numbers or identification on it the one on the right has some kind of numbers on it that you got a magnifying glass to see but they don't correspond to a Ford part number so I'm going to discuss this with the customer but I think we're going to go with a complete set of injectors and uh, hopefully it fixes the misfire and we don't have to go after the spark plugs but if we do we do so here is the information I'm finding on these injectors on the Napa site they list two uh, this injector 7C3E is, is what should be in there according to Ford I called the dealer and got the part number from them and they don't show stock anywhere close by the 5C3E according to Ford are a different injector and I'm not sure what's different about them could have different flow characteristics which would create issues with uh, engine performance uh, unfortunately that's the wrong one and there are 12 of those in, in Winnipeg nearby which would be overnight. This one here from 120606 which is what I need uh, let's see where those are stocked. And of course you can buy new and remanufactured uh, remanufactured ones are about 15 bucks cheaper but what's what's the quality like I don't know how they remanufacture an injector that is completely sealed anyways those ones are nowhere near 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 either so I'm looking at standard new uh, that's the wrong one should be this one here and those are like 75 bucks a piece retail Bosch ones are 65 my preference would be the Bosch ones I'm going to see if I can source those. Check where they got to come from. Check more locations. 62402. Edmonton. So three to four days away. Well, we're going to add these to the cart and place the order.